There's a new update for Topaz Photo AI. This is version 3.5. We're going to take a look at some of the new features. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. There's a new update for Topaz Photo AI. This is version 3.5, and I just want to show you some of the new features in it today. Here's a list of all the new features. You can pause the video and check these out. But they have version 2 of Adjust Lighting, Super Focus in the Cloud at lightning speed on any device, even if you don't have a good GPU. Here's another one. Super Focus now runs 40% faster on Apple devices. And I'll let you know what kind of times I'm getting on my new Mac with a M2 Ultra chip. Here's something nice. If you encounter a crash with Photo AI, your session and work is now saved with crash recovery. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and dive right in and check out some of these new features. Now, the first new feature I want to look at is the new adjust lighting feature. I'm just using a sample image that came with Topaz Photo AI. This is an old photograph and, you know, it could use a little bit of a lighting adjustment. We'll try that first. Also, the folks in the image are out of focus, so we'll use super focus on them. But first, let's do adjust lighting. To add that adjustment, we need to come to add enhancements and click the plus. And here are all your enhancements right here. Up at the top, these are presets. So you could save out your own presets, which is really nice. So let me go ahead and click on Adjust Lighting. This is going to be version 2. And I'll tell you what, it really balances out this image. Let's compare it to version 1. So I'll click the drop down. Here's version 1. See how it's just overall light? But it doesn't really balance out the image as compared to version 2. Now another thing you're going to note is... We now have an exposure slider, which makes a whole lot more sense because in version one, we only had a strength slider. So we could, you know, brighten this up by moving it to the right or darken it to the left. But then other images you may put into photo AI, the opposite effect would happen. If you move it to the left, it would lighten. If you move it to the right, it would darken. In this case, you move it to the right and it lightens. So that was kind of confusing. But now this exposure adjustment makes a lot more sense. So if I want to lighten it up a little bit more, I'll drag it to the right. Or if it's too light, I'll, maybe I'll just drag it to the left a little bit. Maybe just somewhere right there. Now, if we come over here to adjust lighting in this panel, I can click on the eye and shut this off. This is before adjust lighting and this is after. Now, in my photo editing workflow, I don't use adjust lighting, but I'll tell you where it really comes into play for me. If I have some old images where the lighting was a little off, I find adjust lighting is a really good tool to fix those kind of issues. And if you use adjust lighting in your photo editing workflow, please leave a comment and let me know how you use it. I'd really love to hear from you. Also, I have affiliate links in the description below. If you want to pick up any of the Topaz products, I would appreciate it if you use my links. I make a small commission when you do that, and that helps to support my channel. So when you use my links, I really appreciate it, and thank you. This new exposure slider is really nice because you know beyond the shadow of a doubt, when you move this to the right, you will lighten. When you move it to the left, you'll darken, unlike version 1. So this is a great new feature, but the best new feature is the fact that it really balances out the images really nicely, and I really appreciate that, and it is a really good improvement. And if you think this is a good improvement, if you've been trying it and working with it, let me know what kind of results you're getting. By the way, in a future update, we should see a highlight and shadow slider added to adjust lighting version 2. I think that'll be a welcome update. What do you think? And lastly, let's turn our attention to Super Focus Beta. I'm going to click on Super Focus Beta. Now remember, it still is in beta. It's not perfect yet, but hopefully it will get improved. It's really okay at this point, but I think it could be better. Now, if you have an older computer, if you look at the top right of my interface, you see I have 63 credits. You can now render super focus in the cloud and if we look down here cloud render will take 50 seconds it'll cost you three credits so there's a little bit of a cost there i know a lot of you don't like that i know i don't like that but it's there if we have an old computer now i'm using a new mac with a m2 ultra chip in it and my times are pretty good with this and they say macs are now like 40 percent faster and i've noticed depending on what settings i use here if you only use like sharpen strength your times will be a little bit longer. If you use Sharpen Strength with Focus Boost, your times will be a little bit shorter. But I'm noticing times anywhere, depending on the size of the image, between 
one to 10 minutes. And typically they're right around like four to five minutes. So for me, that is a really good improvement. And I have to agree, I think the 40% is an accurate speed increase. Now, when I look at this image, I don't care about this whole image becoming sharp. I just want the subjects to be sharp. So here's what I do first. Click on edit selection and then you see the auto selection drop down. I'm going to click this and I'll click subject. And you'll note that it's missed some of the subject here. So I'm going to use the object selection for brush settings. This is a drop down. You have a super pixel brush, a regular brush, object selection. I'm using object selection. So what I'll do is just hover over areas of the image and Photo AI picks them up, and then I just go ahead and click. It smiths the shoe, hover down here, click on here. And now I have the entire subject selected, except this hand right here. I'll click right here. And now we're only going to be super focusing our subject. And now what I'll do is click on controls again. I like to start with sharp and strength. So I'll try low, medium, and high. I tried low. It wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. So I'll click on medium. And now we get this box right here. You see that? And we could change the size of that preview control box. Right now I'm on small, medium, or large. Now if you choose larger sizes, it takes a little longer to render. But let me just hover over this gentleman right here and click one time. And I'll leave this in real time and we'll see how long it takes to render. It's not super fast, but it's not too bad. And now we can see there's the result. I'm gonna hold down my space bar. Here's before and here's after. Now you are seeing the lighting changes as well, but just look at the sharpness of his face. See how blurry it is? And now when I release my space bar, you can see, I think medium is right. No need to go to a focus boost or high. Now, if you have a really out of focus image, you could go right into super focus, but I always like to check out the regular sharpened models first because maybe you don't need super focus and why use it if you don't need it. Now, in case you didn't know this, you can take this preview control and drop it over any part of the image that you want to and let it go ahead and render out and see how it will work on different parts of the image. Like it looks really good there. You know, we could click on the close here and see what it looks like with the sharpening settings that you have picked. Now, again, it is rendering in real time and now it's done. And I really like this result. Preview control, very handy in picking out the right sharpened strength or focus boost. And now I know that medium is the right sharpened strength for me. If you want to, you can click clear preview to get rid of the boxes. You really don't have to. So I know I want medium. I need to render this out. Now for my computer, I'm going to click render. I'm not going to use a cloud credit. If you have a slower computer, you're going to have to use a cloud credit. Now, by the way, you could come up here to the top right side of the interface and click on this little icon right here. And it tells you how many credits you have available. You can click here to buy credits, whatever you need. Now, if you do use a credit, if we look down here for cloud render, it will take 50 seconds to render that out. So that's really quick. And you'll need to spend three credits to get that. It's going to take me longer than that. And I'll let you know the exact amount of time it takes on my newer Mac computer after I click render. I'll run a stopwatch on that and I'll give you my time. So I'm going to go ahead and click on render. We'll leave this run for a little bit. I went ahead and started my stopwatch because it'll give us an approximate time that this will take. So let's just wait a second or two till my time comes up here. I'm still waiting here patiently for it to tell me how long it will take to render out this image. And it says about six minutes remaining. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I'll get right back to you and give you the exact time. I think it'll take less than six minutes. I'm back. The render time took four minutes and 33 seconds. It's not too bad. You know what? I think I can live with that. And let me go ahead and zoom into this image. And I do have to say, on my Mac, I am seeing a speed increase in the rendering time, and I think 40% is pretty good. Now, here is the before. I'm holding down my space bar, and now here is the after. So I'm really happy with this result. I'm going to go ahead and zoom this to fit the screen, and now let's look at the overall before and after. We started out here, and we end up here. So pretty cool. Well, there you go, everyone. We have a new update for Topaz Photo AI version 
3.5. Hey, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.